So here we're going to go through the surface anatomy of the heart. The first thing you need to notice is that the left side of the heart is actually over here and the right side of the heart is over here. So this heart would be sitting in a person who's actually facing you right now in anatomical position. So we're going to start on the right side of the heart. Now remember the right side of the heart, this is gonna deal with pumping deoxygenated blood to the lungs. Whereas the left side of the heart is going to deal with pumping oxygenated blood to the body. Okay, that's the two main circuits for the heart. We're going to start with the right atrium, which is basically the chamber of the heart on the right side on the top, and that's going to have a little opening inside, and this is the right atrium. Okay, but covering the right atrium, we have this little flap that kind of looks like an earlobe, which stands for the right auricle, which literally means resembling the ear or earlobe. Alrighty. Now, looking around this area, we also have the right ventricle. So this is a very muscular wall. The ventricles are more muscular. And once again, this is the bottom chamber of the heart, the right ventricle. We're going to do the internal anatomy another time. So remember that the right atrium is going to contract and pump blood down to the ventricles. And then the ventricles are going to contract on the right side. And it's going to go through the pulmonary artery. So this main part where it's going away from the heart towards the lungs is called the pulmonary artery. This main part is called the pulmonary trunk. Now you will see at the pulmonary trunk, it's going to branch off into two separate directions. You kind of see that on the back side, and then you see this side. Now the reason for that, the reason it's branching into two different ways is because it's going to be going towards the lungs, and you have two lungs on the left side and as well as on the right side. So that's going to be the right ventricle contracting, pushing through that pulmonary artery. A few other structures on the right side of the heart to note. We've got this blood supply that looks like it's kind of coming in from the aorta, and that is true. This is going to be the right anterior descending coronary artery. Coronary basically means we are going to be feeding the heart tissue itself because the heart really needs a blood supply to stay alive. So this is going to be the right anterior descending artery. So once this artery goes all the way through the heart, we're going to be going through what's called these marginal branches of this coronary artery. It'll feed all the tissues in here, and then it's going to get drained, okay, through the venous system, the coronary veins, eventually ending in what's called this coronary sulcus right here. Now, all of the veins of the coronary system will actually converge on this coronary sulcus and bring it back to the right atrium. Because once again, once it feeds the oxygen, the heart muscles, it needs to go back to the lungs. So it's going to insert into the right atrium, back to the right ventricle, through the pulmonary artery, as I mentioned earlier, and then go to the lungs to get oxygen. The right side of the heart is also going to bring back deoxygenated blood from the body in two different directions, right? Blood that had gotten to the basically upper neck, arms, and head region, and then all the lower body tissues as well. So we're going to drain that blood back to the right atria, okay, because it's deoxygenated, going to go to the lungs eventually, and it's going to come through the vena cava, both superior and then we can also see the inferior vena cava on the bottom. Vena cava just stands for vein cave. It's a big vein that looks kind of like a cave. So we get the superior and we get the inferior. This model also shows the right and left brachiocephalic veins. So these are going to be kind of the main veins that are pulling blood back from the arms and the neck and head area, bring it back through that superior vena cava. Alrighty, so once the blood has gotten to the lungs, we need to bring that blood back to the heart to pump it to the body because now it's oxygenated, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to bring the blood back through these red vessels on either side of the heart. So you see them on this side, and you also see them on this side. These are called veins because they're bringing blood back towards the heart, but they're actually pulmonary veins because they came back from the lungs. And they're red because they're oxygenated, right? We just picked up oxygen at the lungs. All of these veins will converge on this structure on the top called the left atria. The left atria is covered by a left auricle, just like on the right side. Once the blood enters the left atria, it's going to pump down into the left ventricle, which is labeled six here. Now the left ventricle, as you can tell, has a lot of thick muscle layer. And that's because it's gonna pump blood all the way throughout the whole body. So very, very important structure here. So once the ventricles will pump, it'll pump blood through this massive, massive, massive artery called the aorta. So we've got our ascending aorta, all righty, right here as it's going up. Then we've got our aortic arch because it looks like the arch, you know, in St. Louis. And then that's going to go into the descending aorta on the backside, as well as through three different arteries that are branching off the top. These arteries are the brachiocephalic. We've got the left common carotid, and we've got the left subclavian artery, all branching off from that aortic arch. Okay, a couple other structures to note here. So once again, we are pumping blood through the entire body as well as the heart itself. So just as we mentioned earlier, that little coronary artery is going to branch off from the base of the aorta, and it's also going to sneak in underneath that pulmonary artery and go through this structure, and this is going to be called the left coronary artery, okay? Left coronary artery can go in two different directions to feed the left side of the heart. One would be go the anterior route, and this is called the left anterior descending artery, all righty? 
This is the most common one that gets blocked with heart attacks, which is why it's called the widow maker, is when this guy gets blocked off and then all the blood supply to this region of the heart gets blocked off, therefore this heart tissue will die. Now on the lateral side, on the left side, we've got this circumflex artery that's going to bend around the left side. So it's the left posterior descending artery on the left side of the heart to feed kind of the back part. So once the oxygenated blood actually feeds the heart tissue on this left side, it's going to drain through this massive vein called the great cardiac vein. And this is the smaller one. This is just the posterior coronary vein of the left ventricle, which will eventually feed back into the right atrium. You don't see that here, but it will feed back in there to go back to the lungs, right to the right side of the heart. Now, a couple other structures that we see here on the outside. Number one, we've got this ligament that's connecting both the aortic arch and the pulmonary artery. It's important to keep these structures contained, right, together, so that when the heart beats, it doesn't all just fly around like crazy. So this is called the ligamentum arteriosum because it's the ligament of the main arteries. Okay? We've got the apex of the heart, which is this pointed tip that points down towards your left ilium, that hip bone. And then you also have the base of the heart, which is referring to this part of the heart, which is the top. It's kind of weird that this is called the base and this is called the apex, but it's because that apex is pointed. And last but not least, let's take a look at the posterior aspect of the heart for the surface anatomy. Interestingly enough, you see these two big tubes here. This is actually number 20 is your esophagus, and this is your trachea. So this is your windpipe where air is actually going into to get into the lungs. Now, once it gets through the trachea, the air will pass through two different directions, which are called the left and right bronchi, which are basically the branches of the lungs. Now, this makes sense that the lungs are down here because, remember, the pulmonary arteries right here are going to be pumping to the lungs. So it's not a very long distance.